under cold Midwest skies. Something lurks through the dark. From the rolling hills to the flatlands, they move through the fields. They are cryptids of the corn. Hi guys, it's Justin and it's Jay and we're back. Happy Thanksgiving. Yep, it's thanks or the day after Thanksgiving 2021. Uh, you guys may notice something new before this as long as everything works. And if it doesn't, ignore this. <laughs> I think I got it figured out. I played around with it, but we should have an intro on this on this episode. And from now on, uh, let us know what you guys think about it. Uh, we enjoy it. So, you know, that, that's one new thing. Mm -hmm. And then the other new thing, uh, the art. Yes, the cover so, art. We have brand new cover art from a man in uh, Sweden. And his name, so we got it from Fiverr. He was super fast, super helpful, and really excited about our, like, our podcast and stuff like that. And he's actually listening to this. Uh, I can see him. I can, I'm tracking him on our little uh, analytics so, uh, I don't know his real name. I know his uh, Fiverr name is PHL Design. Super nice man, quick, uh, cost effective, great quality. I mean, for he did that in 24 hours. Uh, but let us know what you think about both of those things. So, that's the two new things with that. And we have, I'm getting second uh, art done too. Just kind of have like a little alternative version. Uh, you may see that on the Facebook page and stuff like that. And, but yeah, I had these two guys that had very different art styles and I just couldn't pick. So I just did the American thing and bought both. <laughs> but, yeah. but PH, PHL designs is just, just great. Yeah. I think it looks awesome. It looks really good. And, uh, he had a second one with a dog man in it too. Oh yeah. So we may be coming back for that later. Okay. So we may switch it up periodically and see if anybody notices. Heck yeah, why it not? It might just be a different cryptid in the corn. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so that's the whole thing. Um, he was super, super excited, uh, which, you know, it's more fun to give your money to somebody that's really excited about your project. Definitely. Because uh, I talked to a lot of people on Fiverr about getting it done, and some were just like, the business pages, they're all business pages, but some were just like, yeah, okay, Bigfoot, sure. Right. <laughs> we'll get right on that. Mm -hmm. um, so, like you guys know, if you listen to the bonus episode, I just got back from Crypticon. Uh, Jay couldn't go this time. I think next year, we're going to try to get a booth. Absolutely. Uh, so, we'll, we won't only just be there. We'll have a booth somewhere. I'm praying. I'm praying they don't put us next to Mountain Monsters. <laughs> Nothing. To, I love the guys. They are the nicest people, but the lines they had were just too too long. Ridiculously yeah. long. And I think they're going to fix that. Like I said in the little bonus episode, that was kind of the the only problem. This is the first time they've had it in this hotel conference center. So there's, you know, there's always going to be kinks to work out the first time you have an event that big in a new place. Yeah. And that was the biggest kink. And um uh, the whole rest of the weekend went perfectly. The speakers were on time. They had a little bit of technical difficulties with uh some of the mics the first day. Yeah. They busted right through that, got that worked out. The, uh, but so they had mountain monsters back in the corner of the biggest vendor room. And so there was just this giant L in front of like 10 vendors. Okay. So that sucked for those vendors because that's a lot of, a lot of money that's not, you know, not passing them. Right. Not making it to their business. They're there to make money. Booth. Right. I yeah. mean, some of these guys are from, you know, Texas, Florida. Uh, there was a couple from England. Yeah. Uh, Germany. Um, wow, your boy Justin was the first one in line on Saturday, uh, but I let an old man, uh, not an old man, sorry, an elderly man uh, get ahead of me, a uh, veteran, and so he could sit down, and yeah. But of course you were first. I was first for like an hour and a half, and then him and his uh, daughter walked up, and I'm like, oh yeah, go right, like, I'm not gonna, it's not that big a deal, you can go, you know, you can go in. <laughs> But some people are very obsessive about right. being 
So what? Uh, what all big names were there? There was uh, Mountain Monsters. Uh, sorry, Mountain Monsters and uh, Finding Bigfoot crew. Bobo was supposed to be there. Mm -hmm. Bobo's not dead. Okay, phew. Because people kept saying Bobo's dead. Bobo is sick, so he couldn't make it. But this is the first time they were supposed to be together at a public event since the show ended. Oh, okay. So that was kind of the whole, that was one of the big sellers. Yeah. And he couldn't make it. Some people get so mad. I'm like, if Bobo could have been there, he would have been there. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's not like, I don't get why people get so mad. Like, you know, you just got to pray for the guy and hope he's okay. Right, yeah. And then a bunch of people came up to Cliff Brockman. And I had a long conversation with him. He's very nice. They're all very nice. That was probably the best thing about the conference is literally everybody was nice. That's awesome. Um, but yeah, people kept coming up to him and saying, my condolences for you guys are with Bobo. And they're like, what are you talking about? We just talked to Bobo like half an hour on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> like, so everyone thinks he's dead. Yeah, but like I, there was a video came out. And oh it my... was spreading around on the pages for Crypticon. Oh my God. That's saying, you know, Bobo died uh, like a car wreck. Oh, my God. And so everybody was freaking out. Yeah. <laughs> and then, no, Cliff Cliff called Bobo, and Bobo answered. He's like, just t just say you're alive. Like, yeah, I'm alive. <laughs> I don't feel like it, but I am. Yeah. And so. Wow, anything for clicks, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah I, I, I'm sure they're both, I'm sure they're all annoyed. Not bad. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. Uh, so we hung out in the bar uh, every night. Because we're alcoholics and we were in Kentucky. We're not alcoholics. But um, there was pretty much just vendors and speakers there. And we got hung out. They were the nicest people. We didn't buy a single beer the whole weekend. They bought them for yeah. you. Yep. And they were just like, they wanted to talk to you. Like, it was very refreshing. That these are like the celebrities of yeah. the kind of the circles we run. Quote, unquote, yeah. Right. It's just, they are the celebrities for the circles we run. Yeah, yeah. And kind of could be. That's awesome. You know, never got frustrated. I mean, they all were charging for extinguishers and all have a graph. So that's, you know. That's how they make You got to make money. Yeah. I get it, because you're coming, I mean, some of those guys, are, like, Cliff's coming from Oregon. Yeah, it's quite a journey. And I think they get, I, I don't know how much they get paid, but I think it's less than two grand for, yeah. like, speaking. Yeah. So that's not a lot of money when you're, there and you're there for five you know four or five days and i get it cliff uh the stand i got the bigfoot wood knockers from he didn't charge us um for signatures he, as he's he, they're nice people uh, I'm trying to think we met hillbilly horror show okay that's a real podcast yeah you guys want to listen if you like uh they do a little bit of different stuff than we're probably going to cover ever i don't like very much of the super paranormal stuff okay because uh which we'll get into soon my, some of my experiences growing up my whole philosophy in life is if you can't shoot it and kill it you don't mess with it <laughs> not saying i'd ever harm a bigfoot or something but i do believe they're at least mostly flesh and blood and i think a bullet will do some damage oh yeah now, when you start talking about shadow people and demons and stuff like that, ghosts and you know that's that's a lot harder to that's a lot harder to hurt. Right, it's a lot easier for it to hurt you. Right, but uh, so we'll see about some of that. Uh, and their name is you know Jerry and Tracy, and they were super sweet. I met them before I knew who they. I, I knew the podcast. I listened to the, their podcast. I didn't know what they looked like. Yeah, and uh, we were at dinner on Friday night, and this lady, this couple came in. And she had beautiful, like, green, blue, turquoise hair. And I just complimented her hair. And she's like, oh, you know, thank you. And I'm like, yeah, I've dyed my hair a couple colors in my life. And I just love, like, that blue-green. It's like uh, almost a deep sea color. Gotcha. It was really pretty. <clears throat> and then later on we met up, they were super nice. They gave us a lot of, you know, good tips of how to That's when Then to you found grow. out later it was yeah. them. Okay. Yeah. I just never... And then we met Steven. He runs the North Carolina... Cryptozoological and Paranormal Museum. He's invited us down to do Bigfoot research with them. Uh, he said give him a couple weeks notice. I got all his contact. He's already contacted me a couple times since Crypticon. Amazing man. Ooh, so let's expect a future episode mm -hmm. on that experience. Yeah, and uh, we'll try to go down there and talk to him and do some stuff down there. Um, 
But yeah, he's really nice. He is just upgrading the museum uh, from his house to an actual giant space. Oh, sweet. Okay. And he's in the process of doing that like this week. Oh, nice. And uh, so he's going to have to charge for the museum. It's the first time it'll ever have this, a fee. This is current news. Yeah. This is... And he is worried that, you know, because he's going to charge like four or five bucks. And I'm like, I'd pay it. You know, four or five bucks ain't going to stop nobody. Right. Yeah. And that's going to help, you know, you pay rent on the place. Because he's like, it was different. And I agree. It was different when he was doing it in his house. Because, you know, it's his house. He just had a couple rooms. Mm -hmm. But now he's gotten, he said he had so much stuff, it's time to upgrade. Yeah. And they have, he has probably, <coughs> well, I won't spoil that. Because I don't know if we're supposed to talk about that. I didn't ask. But I will say that he has some uh, Sasquatch evidence. Yeah. That is truly amazing. I don't know if we're just to talk about what it is. I didn't ask for permission, and I don't want to get anybody's stuff away. Well, let's see it for a future episode. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Jeez. <coughs> Jay's trying to force me to learn how to edit. What do you mean? Oh, oh but the cap cost and mm -hmm. stuff. Well, you know. We'll we gotta see. Learn some, we gotta learn someday. Yeah, we'll see. That ain't happening. It will. I'll just pay one of these college kids to start doing it. Um... <laughs> Tom Shea, Tom Shea, I got a bunch of tracks and stuff. Uh, he's a really big name on our part of the country for Sasquatch research. Uh, he talked a lot, a uh, really sweet man, talked to him a couple times, but about his experiences and how he's gotten the best results of his, you know, in his area. Uh, so, new research techniques. So, he kind of... I don't want to say he made a crack at the Finding Bigfoot people, but he kind of made a crack at that kind of process of the TV and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, well, he just said that, you know, you're not going to go out. And, these aren't dumb animals or these aren't dumb things. You're not going to find. They know it's you. They know you're out there. Uh, every time you enter the woods, like you walking up on a Bigfoot 99% of the time, the Bigfoot let you right, do that. Right. Uh, there are the rare cases where I do think people surprise a sasquatch you know it just if you do something really random they weren't expecting and now they're like you know crap <laughs> yeah you're on top of them yeah but um he's like yeah you just have you pick a couple areas you go out you know a couple times a week if you can uh they learn you and you kind of just sit in lawn chairs at night you don't have a fire you can have lights and stuff no that you don't want to shine lights at them but he's like the important thing is when they start making a little bit of noise you don't react at all. You pay no mind to them. And that'll encourage them, you know, to do it a little louder next time. Or to, if you want that kind of stuff. And then he has the, uh, yeah, don't pay that. The food traps, which are basically like big PVC tubes you hang about eight foot off the ground. You try to do it over soft soil so you get really nice footprints. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and you always follow the same patterns. Like, when you go in, like, we go in on a Friday night, we do these kind of zones, and that's what we do. And he said that's really encouraged some activity. When you become predictable, they feel safer with interactions. Mm -hmm. uh, so they'll actually, like, leave stuff on the path, or they may walk over your path. You know, they are very curious animals. They're very curious things. I don't, you know, I say animals, but, you know, we are animals. Everything... Right, yeah. Every living thing in the uh, animal animal kingdom, in the animal phylum, is an animal. But uh, Hence the name. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of cool to listen. He's like, yeah, you know, you can go out and bang on trees. They know it's you. Yeah, right. <laughs> and he's, like, I, he's like, you can get responses that way. He's just like, that's just not how we have had our, you know, luck in our research and stuff like that. And it is interesting, like, through this whole process as we're continuing to grow and learn and stuff uh and comparing it to the stuff you see on tv with mm -hmm. like all the shows i i understand those are you know 90 percent for just entertainment value it's, mm -hmm. it's there and it is a lot of it's so entertaining but once you start actually doing it you realize okay there's a little bit more different to this when if you're actually just looking for some sort of mm -hmm. evidence or response. And that's really been the funnest thing for me about through all this. Yeah. Because I have zero learning experience. Learning a lot. Yeah. And I hardly ever watch the shows, too. Mm -hmm. I see them from time to time. But, I'm, you know, I've never really... I don't watch too much TV as it is to begin with. But mm -hmm. doing our own thing and, and that's figuring... Yeah, that's it. You know, you're building your own thing. Yeah. Everybody does it differently. Um, 
I was gonna say something else about Thomas, but he's like, oh, he's his comment about the hows and the wood nuts and stuff. He's like, you don't know what that means. Yeah, it's different you don't know what that means to them. Yep. So he's like, why would you make all that noise? These, you know, these things we know they make. Yeah. Why would you do that? And you don't know what they mean. Or, you know, you could be ringing the dinner bell. Right, yeah. It's like, you could be running them out of the area. You know, you could ruin your zone. Yeah. Uh, he's, so he's like, we just, you know, we're not, he's like, we don't go in. We're not quiet. We're not loud. Uh, we're just doing our own thing. And that's how, you know, once they realize that you're not, you're not aggressive, but you're not trying to hide from them either. Right. Because you're not going to hide from them. Yeah. They know you're there. You're in there. It's like trying to hide from someone else in their own house. Mm -hmm. And our buddy Phil, uh, he's talked to me a couple times since Crypticon. He is runs the big uh, Bigfoot Research Group at uh, West Branch, Michigan. Oh, okay. Uh, he invited us up to hang out with him. And we'll probably take that up. Uh, um, hopefully in the spring. Uh, they're a really cool group. They got some really cool stuff. Um, their big thing is kind of like tree scratches and stuff like that. Oh, okay. Bear versus possible Sasquatch. Interesting. Uh, really, really nice people. Uh, so I'm looking forward to hanging out with them again. Um, and Justin but, meets all these people all all over the place. If you ever met Justin, he's... You'll know me. You'll know him and you'll remember him and he'll remember you. And he'll have a lengthy conversation with you if you I'll allow I apologize him. if I don't remember your name. If I've only met you once. Uh, I know all these people's names because I have them written down. Well, that, yeah, but you also remember faces well. I know faces. I'll, I'd recognize anybody. I've been recognized in way northern Michigan by a guy from Ada. Yeah. And I recognized him. And I was up there on honeymoon, and Emily's like, how do you know that person? I'm like, he, he graduated with my brother. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, I've been recognized in really deep Louisiana in a bayou. Yeah, like, come from on. a guy from northern Arkansas, which doesn't sound, they touch... But that's like 900 miles away. Yeah. Uh, and he was down there picking up. He was down there doing the same thing. We were picking up uh, crawfish foil for uh, Labor Day. Ooh, sounds good. Yeah, they they charge. It's weird how they kind of charge that stuff. I know we're not a food show. But if you're ever in Louisiana, uh, there's these little tiny crawfish boils that are right off the highway. You pull off their dirt parking lots. Get it. If you have an allergy, avoid it. <laughs> because Louisiana weeded out everybody with a food allergy a long time ago. <laughs> they do not believe in it. I am allergic to onions, and it took forever to find us a, a crawfish boil that didn't have any onions in it. Wow. And you say you're allergic to onions, and they're just like, uh, don't eat the onion. I'm like, what do you... They, they, <laughs> it's very confusing for them. Yeah. They're sweet people. <laughs> Southern Arkansas are about the sweetest people on this planet. Cajuns are sweet, but they are loud. You know a Cajun. Sweet and spicy. Yeah, that's what yeah. That's what people from Southern Arkansas are like, yeah, we're gonna go down and hang out with the Cajuns. <laughs> They're all Bible belt fear the God fearing people, but the Cajuns party a little harder yeah. <laughs> than the Southern Arkansasers do. Alright. Now we'll get into the meat and potatoes. Alright, about time. The Beast of Bosco. Bum bum bum. This was number four in our poll. I believe. Ohio horn serpents beat this one out, but I didn't have time this week to do all the research on Ohio horn serpents. We've been traveling a lot. I obviously got back from Crypticon. Thanksgiving happened. Yeah. I've been down to Cincinnati twice for just Thanksgiving. Yeah, it's been a busy week. Jay made a face. That's why I said yeah. <laughs> I forget. We're not like, you guys can't physically see us. Not yet. Yeah, I am like 210 pounds and have a rock hard six pack. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a big bag of jelly. And I'm and I'm real tall and uh <laughs> You guys ever seen those young pictures of, of Arnold Sw Schwarzenegger? That's what Jay looks like. Yeah. <laughs> He's leaning on the couch cuz it's like it's just too big. Yeah, just too, too much too, muscle. Yep. All right, the beast of Bosco. And I'm going to apologize right now, but it's from Churro Bosco, Indiana. Uh, the Upper Maumee Watershed. For us, the Maumee's just right over there. Uh, so it's it's a, it's pretty close. And we'll, we'll talk about some stuff. We're going to try to go down there. But the Beast of Bosco is affectionately 
known as Oscar. Okay. Oh, and disclosure, I know nothing of the Beast of Bosco. I'm learning it with you guys right here, right now, if you haven't heard of it either. So we're, we're both on this little journey. So, and I think we'll kind of, I'm thinking we'll start taking turns, but this is kind of the process. When we do a cryptid, we'll kind of do it like this. So I may make Jay do the research on the next one. That's That'll be fun, yeah. And then teach me one. Yeah. There's some stuff I got up my sleeve. Mm-hmm. I'm excited. Um... So this one has a lot of dates and stuff, so I have a little more written than I normally do for these. Uh, okay. So if I take pauses to read, that's what I'm doing. It's because there's a lot. There's actually a lot of information on this one. It's refreshing. Uh, <laughs> they have names and dates and places, and like you can find this stuff. You can find these people. Like, so the first, hmm. uh, the story starts in 1898 when a farmer named Os Oscar Falk, and that's a common name in Arkansas. Uh, but this is northern Indiana. Supposedly saw a giant tor or giant turtle living in his... As he had a little seven-acre lake on his farm. Um, he just decided to leave the thing alone. It never bothered him. He's seen it a couple times. Uh, he said it was just a monstrous turtle. Uh, but that's it. He didn't care. They still swam. They fished. Like, it just The turtle never bothered them. And he never bothered the turtle. Mm -hmm. Um... I'm going to give you a little hint. This is a story of obsession in one man's white whale. Okay. Uh, so that's kind of like, this story goes down a kind of a weird path. So we're going to go half a century later now. We're going to jump all the way into 1948. Uh, the two of the town's residents, Aura Blue and Charlie Wilson. Sorry if I mispronounced those names. Um, also reported seeing a huge, and they specifically said alligator snapping turtle. Okay, so it's snapping uh, turtle. Yeah, alligator uh, alligator snapping turtle. Right. Uh, and they said it estimated they it weighed five to six hundred pounds. Okay. Um, and we'll talk more about kind of the real life alligator snapping turtle later. I've caught a bunch of them in Arkansas and stuff. Um, he told others. Or no, sorry, I hopped around. Uh, while they were fishing that lake. That had become to, uh, had been known as Falk Lake at this point, named after Oscar Falk. Okay. Um, a farmer named Gail Harris owned the land at the time. He owned Land Lake. He let people fish it, stuff like that. Uh, he had started seeing it too. Uh, when after the kids, Harris was very excited about seeing this massive turtle on his land. Yeah, word spread around town. And out of nowhere, everybody wanted this thing dead for a little bit. And I don't understand. I guess we've done it with other animals. It's human nature. But it's a turtle. Yeah. <laughs> Even I get it, it's a giant turtle. But out of nowhere, everybody wanted this thing dead. Yeah. Everyone wanted to be the one to catch it. Everybody, like... And I don't, like... So, this is kind of where the obsession starts. Uh, Harrison decided... Harrison's land. It's his land. And he decides he's going to try to capture the turtle. Uh, naturally the news about the turtle this side spread fame and fortune to him and the town. They have all kinds of stuff about it now. Um, phase one, Harold, or Harris, sorry, built this giant, have you ever seen a minnow trap? Yeah. Uh, if you guys at home haven't seen one, uh, turtle traps and catfish traps are the same thing, just different sizes. So they're like a round, kind of like a metal wire trash can, and they have a wall that has a a, a little hole that the fish and stuff can get in, but it can't get out. So he built one of these out of chicken wire, giant one. And he had a couple men from town place it in with him. And there was people who came to watch this. Like 60 to 70 people, some say. Some say over 100, and some say a little less. Came to watch them put this in. They filled it full of raw meat. Uh, turtles are not hard to catch. Mm -hmm. uh, every time we run a trap in Arkansas, there's turtles in it in 10 minutes. Wow, <laughs> they got good. They got a good sense of smell. They're scavengers, uh, so they do not pass up food very easily. So they put this trap in. They wait a couple hours. There's still a ton of people, and they see the thing. This giant turtle enters the trap, crawls right up the gate, goes into the hole, eats the meat. Then they start trying to pull it out, and he just ripped right through the wire. Oh, like it was nothing. It just like it was nothing. Uh. Harris and the two fishermen 
so after this, after all these people seeing this, it, it got worldwide news, national news. Uh, everybody was talking about it. It was all over. And the media is the one that deemed the reptile the beast of Bosco. Mm, of course. To the locals, it was always Oscar. Yeah. And they talked about Oscar. Like, we have these things where we talk about these kind of mysterious creatures and... We talk about them like fairy tales, mm-hmm. and you know a lot of stuff we talk about. Like we, I talk about it like fairy tales. These guys, half the town at this point had seen Oscar. Mm-hmm. Half the town had known that he is a, a very large turtle. Mm-hmm. It hasn't bothered nobody. Um, and like I said earlier, he was really named after the the, the original farmer Oscar Folk. Um, people. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people flock to this little town trying to see Oscar. There's people by this like 24 7 watching for him. And a lot of people seen him. Yeah. I mean, it's a, you know, I believe now this is a f- fact, quotation marks. I think Snapping Charles can hold their breath for like 50 to 60 minutes. Oh, okay. So almost an, a- or an hour. Uh, alligator Snappers, I think, may even do it longer. Well,. It's weird. So they can go into like uh, it's called brumation under the ice. So that some snappers won't breathe all or breathe all winter, but they kind of turn huh. off. They kind of stop their body. Um. So then he came up with a second plan. This is Harris. Uh, the next attempt at gaining physical proof of the turtle's existence was through the use of a homemade periscope. Oh, okay. He built a periscope. To look, so do you to see how the water. this is kind of getting to the obsession level? Yeah. Um, unfortunately, the water was way too murky, and he ended up severely damaging his eyes with this periscope. How so? It just—I don't know if the light caught it, uh, but he burnt some. He burnt his retinas. Oh wow! So, yeah. So, we all remember the story of the white whale, Captain Ahab. The white whale took his leg. Mm-hmm. And then that was... So, I'm just saying, we try to kill these things, and they hurt us, and then it's on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, then he tried to decide using a dive suit, which failed a bunch of times. The helmet began leaking the first time, then he repaired it, and then he tried again. He searched for two hours. So, then he, oh, so when he tried again, he actually had a diver named uh, Walter Johnson. And the diver was down there for two hours. End up getting stuck in the mud at the bottom of the lake up to his chest. Oh. So the beast of Bosco, everybody ever says this, the beast of Bosco almost killed a man. By doing nothing at by all. By doing nothing. <laughs> by existing and being a turtle. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so some people, uh, Jonathan got stuck and he adamantly refused. So, Jay, I got a question for you. Yeah. I'm doing this a little differently. I know I'm reading a lot. I'm, you know, I'm mumbling on my words. I normally know these stories a lot better. Um, so, if you had, you have a slight obsession with this turtle. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we're not talking about any turtle. You know, we're talking about a turtle the size of a, a car hood or bigger. Right, yeah. Um, you try to catch it in a wire trap. The whole town's seen it. And it just got out of the wire trap. Then you send a diver, or then you build a periscope and burnt your eyes, and then you send a diver in, and couldn't get. What is your natural logical step? Because Jay knows nothing of the next part of the story, but what in your head is the next step? Uh, if you, if I were to want to see it and capture it, see, I would. Me personally, I'd leave it. I'd be done if that diver almost almost killed a man. Get sent the diver down. I'd be done. I'd say we'll see it when we see it. That's how it's always been before. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Let the legend live on. But I'm gonna guess this guy took it to the extra step and went that's, hunting this thing. Uh, that's that's a way to put it. In my mind, you know, I don't know what I would do. I mean, so he's burned himself. Uh, so he's very obsessed with getting this thing he, he does he want to hang it on its wall on his wall i'm guessing all right so the next thing he did is he bought and this is kind of the very the, the poundage varies but we're just going to say 50 pounds of dynamite oh my god okay so he went from a diver looking <laughs> for this to the turtle is going to die yeah and he went around and blew just kept blowing up the lake 
for a day. And he's just waited for it to float to the surface. Uh, it never did. Hmm. And at this point, the town was kind of like, okay, Harrison is lost his marbles, lost his freaking mind. Yeah. And uh, the the town had stopped caring. At this point, it was super obvious that he was just obsessed. Yeah. He had changed. This is not about getting this turtle anymore because the town was behind him for a bit. Uh, and now they're <laughs> they just the only thing he cared about at this point was not about fighting the monster. It was about proving himself right. Right, yeah. Even though most of the town had seen the thing. Yeah. But uh, a lot of people were coming to the town just to make fun of people. Yeah. Uh, for saying they'd seen it. Wow. All right. So I do know this part of the story very well. This is called The Last Ditch Effort. So Harrison decided enough was enough. He got a big crowd around. Her, so he was charging people admission to come to the lake to look for the turtle. Uh, he used that money to buy a giant water pump. Oh. So he's like, and he built a levee and everything. And he starts draining down the lake. And so Seven Acre Lake, he gets it. And there's a crowd. There's a humongous crowd. He gets it down to about an acre. And doesn't see anything. So everybody's like, you know, did the dynamite kill him? Yeah. Did, you know, uh, did he just leave? Because he got tired of it? You know, tur turtles will leave. Mm -hmm. Turtles go great distances mm -hmm. on land. And then out of nowhere, a big part of the mud that was exposed started to move. There was ducks nearby. This giant head shot out of the mud, grabbed the duck, and pulled it in. And then out of nowhere, Oscar emerges. And he's bigger than anybody thought he was. So this is... You know, reports get exaggerated. A six-foot shell, five-foot wide. Oh, my. So six-foot long, five-foot wide. And Oscar's just there. He can see him. Uh, so Harris sees Oscar. This crowd of 100 people sees Oscar. Yeah. Sees that he is truly a giant yeah. turtle. Then the then the, the pump burns up because it's sucking too much mud because nobody's paying attention. Yeah. So then it stops. And then, so... The levee's still built, so it, Oscar just slides back into the acre. So then, uh, what was left was about an acre wide and five foot deep. They had Oscar cornered. Oscar was done. They had people out there 24 7 to make sure he didn't get out of the water. Uh, within a few months, though, so here's. He had, uh, so Oscar, or not Oscar, Harris had lost all of his money doing this, buying this pump. Uh, so he couldn't afford. A new one. He couldn't afford to fix it. To put the pump water so back in. So he is right at the end of his obsession. He is out of money. He can see the turtle. He can't do anything about it. Yeah. Then he finally, a few months goes by, he's working, getting money, getting money, getting money. Bad stretch of rain. And the levee blows out and the lake fills back up. Oh. But then Harris finally gets a, uh, he gets a crane and starts pulling a dredge. Uh, and it's the the turtle still evaded capture. Yeah, they could not catch this turtle. And uh, some people claim, you know, it just laid in the mud. So your dredges are gonna go right over it. Right. Yeah. It's not coming out. Within a few months after that, Harris was defeated by debt and health problems, and he gave up his search for Oscar. He was forced to auction off the farm after declaring bankruptcy. Oddly. The Beast of Bosco was never seen again. Mm. So there's some people that think... Uh, well, the next part is called What Happened to Oscar. So there's all the speculation that the turtle never existed at all. And we'll get into our own thoughts and stuff later. But to me, the amount... Not saying it's impossible, but the amount of town people that had seen the thing... Yeah. You know, and this did save their town. They still have the big, uh, big festival we'll talk about. Um, but yeah, so Oscar's memory still lives on to this day, however, whether it was real or not. Uh, with the Chernobosco Turtle Days Festival held every June, including parades, live entertainment, a fish fry, a poker run, turtle races, Ooh. and even fireworks. 
Okay. So we're going to see if we can get a booth down to this thing. That'd be fun. Mm-hmm. Never been to a turtle race. It's like racing turtles. <laughs> Did I lose my last page? Heard it last all, you know, all night long. Racing turtles? Yeah. Uh, I think so. Oh, there it is. Sorry, people. I was losing. I'm losing pages. We're professionals. Yes. We're working on it. We're working on it. <laughs> um. So, do you want facts first, or do you want to do what you think first? Uh. Well, like, what I. Th I mean, it sounds like to me. I mean, I. You not... want facts first, or yeah, do you want to do what we think first? Give me the facts. Give me the facts. All right. So, Oscar was claimed to be a large American alligator snapping turtle. They are currently endangered in southern Indiana. Mm. They're not found anywhere close to there now. Keyword is now. What do you think I'm going to tell you next? That they used to be there? Oh, maybe. Yeah. Historically, the ranges do go well up into Canada through Indiana. Um, there is no actual documented uh, reports of an alligator snapping turtle being found in the Maumee drainage that I could find. Uh, there was a, there's, there's a lot of reports of people seeing them in the early 1900s. But people were really bad at IDing animals. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, a common snapping turtle, which is all over everywhere. Yeah. People call those alligator snappers all the time. Mm -hmm. They have no, they they are both snapping turtles. But they have nothing alike. Yeah, they're very differently designed animals. Uh, the world's largest alligator snapping turtle. Don't look at my paper. The uh. world's largest alligator. <laughs> and then your eyes go straight there. That, but Stop I looking. I can't read it. My eyes aren't that good. <laughs> the world's largest alligator snapping turtle. How big do you think that is? They get no. large, and they. So the oldest one we have is about 160 years old, 170, and they scientists, herpetologists, which are the study of reptiles and amphibians, not herpes. Oh, okay. Uh, believe they can live well over 200. Well, I did a report on alligator snapping turtles in like Ooh. eighth grade. It was surprising me. So, uh, I don't know. I'm gonna guess around. We, we talking like weight? Weight. Mm, I bet like we're talking world record. 250 pounds. Oh, that's a big turtle. 408. Oh, God, okay. A little off. So Bosco, or not Bosco, the Beast of Bosco, Oscar, was claimed to only be 5 to 600 pounds. Oh, okay. We have a 408-pound alligator snapping turtle. Yeah. It's still not maximum age or size. Right, yeah. His carapace, which is shell, his, his shell, okay. is, I think, four and a half feet long. Oh, wow. So Bosco was claimed to be six feet. Yeah. So when we really get down to the brass tacks, mm -hmm. Oscar was not, he was, he. so keep in mind, we're talking world-class turtles. Right. You know, he would be the world's largest alligator snapping turtle by a, a, a hefty amount. Mm-hmm. But as far as reptiles are concerned, not out of the question. Right. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So reptiles have undetermined growth rate. So they'll get as big as they, as food as they have available. Okay. And Oscar's species can live to be over 200, yeah. as we theorize, but maybe even longer. Uh, there's been some reports of alligator snappers being 450 pounds in the southern U.S., so Louisiana, Arkansas. Mm -hmm. uh, there's one picture going around of a 440-pounder that's on a scale, but there's still some question about you know legitimacy of it. Authenticity yeah. with that photo. Yeah. Uh, truly a big turtle yeah so alligator snapping turtles are very shy very reclusive and they can hold their breath for extremely long times uh they feed by wiggling most of the time they're either scavenging or they feed by wiggling their tongue to mimic a uh, small worm to lure fish in they cannot launch their head like uh common snappers can ah okay the muscles they have built in their head they cannot they can barely move their head uh but their bite force is extreme I didn't um, know that. But they gave up the ability to launch. For so if it's not in their mouth, they're not getting it. Gotcha. Um, so they were native. To, they are native to Indiana, just not that part of Indiana currently. Okay. Uh, historical ranges, like I said, put them well into Canada through Indiana. Yeah. All the way up through Michigan. And all the Great Lakes supposedly probably had them. Uh, but there's, that's, you know, that's 
speculative biology, you know, we th we think. It's hard to, you know, it's hard to tell. Yeah, at it this is. Point. It is. Um, so, I guess I brought that up to say, in the 19, or the 1890s through the 1950s, it's not impossible that there were still a couple alligator snappers hanging around. Right. I mean, we're talking about the animal lives to be 200. Mm-hmm. You know, of course, they could still be there. I don't think there was a breeding population, but, you know. Um, all right. So now, we're going to do what our thoughts are. Do you want to go first or you want me to? I want to hear yours. You okay. go first. Well, so I think we're kind of hitting it where something like that turtle definitely isn't out of the range of impossibility. Yeah. I think it probably, with all the towns, people... Witnessing it, the newspapers, you know, covering it back when they still covered things that mm -hmm. were happening. Uh, yeah, I think it was a real thing, a real a, a real existing turtle that they just couldn't catch. Probably wasn't meant to be ca caught, but mm -hmm. that drove one man mad, obsessed over catching it, and never did. He, yeah, he was truly. This is definitely a, a story of Moby Dick. Oh, yeah. But if I had a turtle like that on my property that I just... I'd feed it. ...had to see... Oh, yeah, I would feed it. I wouldn't try to catch the thing and pull it out, but I'd want to see it. So I don't... There's a, there's a lot of speculation. This is an old story. I don't know if his original thoughts were just to catch it and put it on display, catch it and kill it. Yeah. But it turned fast. <laughs> I mean, it cost him his eyesight and his health. Uh, that's In obsession. every cent he ever made. I mean, he declared bankruptcy over a turtle. Yeah, over a turtle. I mean, it sounds it sounds crazy and stupid, but the steps, it's just human nature mm -hmm. to where now that animal has slighted me. <laughs> now we're mortal enemies. Yep. And the turtle has no idea what's going on. Nope, he's just living. And the pond's getting blown up with dynamite. Yeah, he's like, what's that? And there's a big dredge going by, and the pond's drained, and I get to eat a duck, and... That's nice. <laughs> that turtle lived an extreme life. And I don't know if, in my mind, I guess I'll go, we'll go, were you done with your thoughts? Yeah, uh, yeah, I mean. Sorry. No, you're good. I'm, that's all I had to say. Justin is famous for overstepping other people talking. <laughs> I'm working on it. We're developing. We're, we're going to be better. You remember what Harris, Harris's first name was? Uh, I wouldn't ask her. I'm pulling it no. out. If you guys hear papers moving, I'm looking. About said Samuel, but it's not it's that. It's not Samuel. What are you talking about? I don't know. Gail. Gail. See? Gail Harris. I'm close. If you have a family, I'm sure your family's still alive. I understand. I mean, we have best-selling books about obsession. And it's not the animal that the person's actually obsessed with. It's about proving yourself right or proving yourself you know capable yep and the poor ant well moby dick or a giant turtle oscar oscar the giant turtle you know and i'm gonna get an oscar painting we're working we'll talk about that in a bit but uh yeah in my opinion it's 100 percent real yeah this happened there's just too many people involved uh the size I'm not even sure Oscar was as big as they said he was. Right. But if you've seen... Let's say he was 400 pounds. Let's say he matched world record class. Yeah. He had 400 pounds. Snap and throw. Four and a half foot, four and a half foot long shell. You know, probably three foot wide. Three and a half foot wide. That's not a small animal. That is definitely the biggest turtle you've ever seen in your life. If you especially will ever see. in the 1940s. Right, yeah. You know, we don't have... World class zoos, you know, or available to the public. The internet, where you can just see pictures yeah. of turtles or big ones, whatever. You don't know in Louisiana that these things are common, right? Or in your part of this, the country, they were common a hundred years ago. Mm -hmm. And Oscar was there when they were common. Yeah. And Oscar just happens to be big enough to not get picked on by a coyote. Right. Yeah. Still living. Yeah. Because that's where they get got a lot is when they go and land to lay eggs because they're so ungainly. Ah, oh, coyotes? Mm, any animal. I mean, any animal will prey upon uh, oh, yeah. the snapping turtles when they go to lay eggs. Oh, okay. But, you think, so Oscar's real. You think he's still alive today? I think it's possible. So let's say Oscar... So let's match the world record uh, alligator snapper. Okay. Let's say Oscar was 400 pounds and he was seen in the 40s. 
Okay. Late 40s. So it's been 60, 70 years. Yep. So he'd be 210-ish if we go by the world record's age. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. He'd 70, be, 80 years now. Yeah. yeah. But he, for him to be then, he'd have had to be uh, 140 to 160 years old. So already, So yeah. he's over 200 years old. Yeah. Not out of the realm for an alligator snapper at no. all. Especially uh, if he's not bothered. Yeah. Uh, I mean... He got bothered at the end. Well, yeah. Uh, I don't know if he survived that. I don't know if he went into the Maumee River. Yeah. Um, could be he could be at a crab boil down in Louisiana. <laughs> Sorry, I was reading something. I had a little warning pop up. Uh oh. We're fine. We just uh, nothing. It's okay. All right, we're good. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm always scared that the recording is just going to be like ah, no the, file. Yeah. Have fun today. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, he could be all the way, uh, oh, he'd have to get out of this drainage he's in. Oh, okay. Because he's in the Lake Erie drainage. Oh. But he could be sitting out on South Bay. He could be Betsy. South Bay Betsy. What's South Bay Betsy? Ah, uh, another episode. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Next time. Yeah. Uh, South Bay Betsy is, uh, our Loch Ness. Oh, okay. In the Great Lakes? Mm-hmm. Gotcha. It's actually a giant turtle from Indiana named Oscar. Oh. It's on vacation. Yeah. Um... <laughs> But yeah, just it's just in a story where a very large normal animal that was uh, probably a relic population before industrialization of the area. Mm-hmm. He was Oscar was most likely the last alligator snapper. There may have been a couple in that little pond. Yep, uh, and that could have helped with you know some sightings. I think he was just a big turtle, and definitely a world class turtle. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think that the training of the lake and the dynamiting and stuff would explain why he was never seen again. I don't think they killed him. Uh, the dredge could have crushed him. Yeah, very well. And that could have killed him. I'm more leaning towards after they drained it and it filled back up, he left. Yeah. Uh, just, uh, so, trolls do that. They yeah, just, I'm they, out of here. They do. And they, he went to the drainage and he got into a different body of water. I mean, I've seen some big turtles in my day, but not that big. Mm-hmm. So, here in a bit, well, I guess I had fun doing this. This was a fun episode. Oh, yeah. Uh, a lot of story. It's just weird. A lot of names. You know, doing encrypted stuff. Yeah. There's not a lot of names. Usually nobody, no. Nobody wants their friggin' name attached to any of this uh-uh. stuff. Uh, this one had names the whole way down. Yeah. It had properties. It has addresses. It has, you know, a towns. It, it, uh, you can find these guys' grandkids. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we can harass him for turtle secrets. <laughs> yeah, turtle secrets. How do you feel that your grandpa killed himself looking for a turtle? Uh, I probably wouldn't like those questions no. very much. <laughs> but obsession is just human nature. Oh, yep, for sure. Uh, it just happened to be a giant turtle this time. Uh, so, so enjoyed this. Uh, I didn't like how much I had to read because I know I'm not very good at looking at the paper. Bap, and then looking bap. But we have some news to talk about. More news. I don't know. Did we say anything about Salt Fork in the beginning? Uh, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. If not, we'll say it again. Okay. We got a table for the Ohio Bigfoot Conference at Salt Fork. We'll be vendors. So that's exciting. Yeah, that's going like, to be a new real chapter. Things. Yeah, yeah. It's the next uh, step up. Yep, and we gave a shout out to the people that did... Well, the guy that did uh, the new logo, the new uh, cover art. Uh, the giveaway, right after this, if me and Jay have time, which it looks like it's only 10, 15, we're going to get all the names gathered and probably give that thing away. And I'll make Jay mail it. Okay. I'm just picking. I'll mail it. <laughs> um, our Christmas party oh, is yeah. next week. Yep. On Thursday. Jay's opening up the Bowen Alley two hours early. It's at four. I don't yeah, know. yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. So, come on out. Uh, any of our local guys, you know. Uh, Jay has done a lot of work for this thing. Because uh, he's, on a consignment, got something that's going to be... We're going to raffle it off to kind of earn some money to buy some equipment we need. Yep. Uh, but how big did we get? Or I got an uh, eight-footer. An eight-foot metal Bigfoot. And so that'll be a, a raffle tickets. You know, you buy, I don't know, we'll probably do... For 20 bucks, you get 30 tickets, something like that. Yeah, that sounds uh, good. 
I know more my money will be in that pot. <laughs> you think I can fit him in the big window? Oh, I think there's just enough room for him. I don't know if there is or isn't. It's a big window. It is. <laughs> uh, an eight-footer. Man, that's a big one. Um, Wouldn't fit in my uh, in my house. No. Oh, yeah. Whoops. Jay keeps kicking the table. Yeah, my bad. So if you ever hear me just gently touch Jay's leg, that's what's happening and nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, we're excited. So we'll do the giveaway here in a bit. Um... We're really looking forward to hearing from you guys. But yeah, I had a I had I had a lot of fun. Yeah, this is a good one. This, this is, is fun. We're getting, I think we're getting better. I think so too. I mean, only you guys can be the judge of how we're doing. Mm -hmm. So uh, just let us know. Let us know what we need to improve on. What you're liking so far? Yep. Easiest way is Facebook or the email. And if you have a story, we could share on here. Or if you are interested in being an interviewee, and we can keep it 100% uh, confidential. Yeah, confidential, no names, nothing like that, please reach out to us through Facebook or the email to set it up. We really want to start getting into that kind of stuff because we're starting to do our active research. Yep. So those kind of stories are what helps with and, that. And the Facebook's Hardin County Bigfoot Society. Mm -hmm. Or well, Cryptids of the Corn, too. Oh, it's we got... Have, okay. We have a Facebook for the podcast. Gotcha. Um, and then, yeah, though, it's Hardin... Bigfoot at gmail dot com is the email, and I'll, I'll put it in links below and all that. Yep. All right, guys. I have been Justin, and I have been Jay, and we are Cryptids of the Corn, and we'll see you next week. Bye. <laughs>